Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves in one. My name is Rich Lebrun, and I am the founder and CEO of Lebrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show, and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Our special guest today is Chad Zdenek, founder of CSQ Properties. Chad is a licensed general contractor, professional engineer, former CEO of, Mo of Mobile Illumination, and it holds three master's degrees. We'll have to find out what all those are. He started out in construction management in the mid-1990s, working for Swinerton Builders before moving into structural engineering Get this for working with for Boeing on the space shuttle main engines. I'd like to hear more about that as well. Then he joined Mobile Illumination as CEO, helping to grow the company by over 2,000% in 15 years. Since then, he's begun his real estate investment career. Currently, he has grown his general partner portfolio to over $85 million. Today, he invests actively and passively in multifamily and self storage projects across the United States. He is also one of the rare investors who invests in California as well as outside of California. He's also an author of a book called Why Entrepreneurs Should Invest in Apartments. With all that said, Chad, welcome to the program. Sounds good, Rich. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thank you for taking time out of your day. You know, my background, as I mentioned before the show, is, in, is 30 years in commercial real estate, so we have some kindred spirit here. We'll get a chance to dive into that throughout the program here. But before we get too far, Chad, our listeners always like to hear a founder's story. And uh, it's always good to hear how you started your business. Where did the idea come from? Was it easy? Was it hard? Was it who you forced into it? Or did you do it voluntarily? Or are you following a passion? Whatever it is, Chad, tell us a little bit more about your story. Sure. So so I kind of have uh, three unique and distinct career paths, if you will, at different times. So initially, as you mentioned, uh, I technically started out as a rocket scientist working for Boeing on the space shuttle main engines for, for seven years. Definitely a cubicle warrior, as you might say. I had a, a very you know rigid, rigid um, uh, calendar, you know, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, five days a week. Uh, not a whole lot of overtime, but uh, but definitely the cubicle guy, corporate. I was on the the um, executive management path for Boeing. Uh, they helped. Uh, they actually paid for for two different master's degrees that I got. Uh, one in structural engineering, and then one at uh, UCLA for my MBA. And uh, coincidentally, I, at UCLA, both my brothers were playing football at UCLA. And I was getting my MBA, and for one year, all three of us overlapped at uh, the same time at UCLA, which was pretty cool. And uh, and I'd been I'd been really working pretty hard at, at Boeing, trying to do the best I could. And I had a I had a tough time with the bureaucracy. Right? It was an amazing company, super brilliant people working there. Um, got to work with NASA a lot and different space flight centers, like really, really cool opportunity, especially I was only 21 when I started working there. But, uh, you know, definitely the youngest guy in the block and uh, working with some, some much older people that had been there forever. And it was amazing. But for me, like I'm an entrepreneur, you know, through and through. And I always had that that burning passion to to just really do something on my own. I had previous experiences in entrepreneurship before then, which we, we could go into, but we got a lot to cover. So maybe not this time around, but suffice it to say that, that when my brother was finishing up UCLA, uh, he started a lighting business and, and I was getting my MBA focusing on entrepreneurial studies. And I used his company as like my pet project within the MBA to like do consulting work, to talk about how we could grow and scale the business. And, and at one point, like he'd wanted me to work for him or work with him. And I told him, I said, look, the business is really small. I'm on this executive management track. I'm doing pretty well over here. But I said, I'll tell you what I said, I said, you get it to $200,000 in revenue and I'll come over and, and, and I'll work with you. And, uh, and he said, okay, it's a deal. So he, he got there. I want to say his between his second, second and third year, 
And and I had to take a 50% pay cut to go work with him. He gave me half the business. We split it 50-50. Uh, I took a 50% pay cut and he wound up paying me more than he was paying himself. Mm-hmm. So we, we definitely met in the middle. That entrepreneurial spirit, like, you know, betting on yourself was really big at the time. And, uh, and it was a big change, right? And, and a lot of my engineering friends, they really kind of poked fun at me and they, they didn't understand why I was doing what I was doing. But for me, I, I loved entrepreneurship. I wanted to better myself. I, I liked working with my brother. And, and so we did it. And then, as you mentioned earlier, you know, we grew the business uh, 2000%, wound up uh, having, um, when I left, about 75 employees, three different warehouse locations. And, uh, and my brother wound up buying me out. This was back in, uh, in 2018. And then that's when I started my, my third career path, which is in real estate, something I've always wanted to get back to because I started out in construction and structural engineering. Uh, so I, I really wanted to get into real estate more as an investor. And that's what I've been doing ever since with CSQ Properties. And apologies, my bio is a little old. We're actually, uh, the portfolio is over 150 million now. Okay, so, great. So uh, yeah, we're plugging away on that, primarily in apartment buildings um, in California and in Florida. That's fantastic. Well, yeah, it's interesting. I always love to hear the background of the stories because uh, you know, rocket scientist to real estate investor, you know, stopped along the way to run a company for a while and, and grow and, uh, and get bought out. So great story. Um, but you, I'm going to take it back a little bit. You said you had an entrepreneur streak. Okay. Where'd that come from? Was that a family thing or is that just something that you ever have had ever since you were a kid or what? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, from a family thing. So my, my dad, uh, he's still practicing uh, eye surgeon. And he start, had his own practice. He never worked for an HMO or anything like that. And, and so that was very entrepreneurial. I remember, you know, working Saturdays and helping him out on different, different projects. And, and he was always, you know, um, working on his practice. And then uh, I'm actually the oldest of five kids. And I'm not sure if you've heard of the, organiz- uh, the entrepreneurs organization, but it's basically uh, 17,000 members worldwide, all a million dollar and above gross revenue companies. And uh, me and both my brothers are both in EO for our respective businesses. So it's pretty rare to have three, three brothers, I guess, in EO. Uh, yeah. My sister has actually started an IT company. So, so we've been very entrepreneurial. And, uh, and I'll tell you my first entrepreneurial story, if you just give me about about 30 seconds. So yeah, go ahead. when I was growing up, my, my dad um, always gave us projects to do around the house. And uh, especially like over the summer when we were, you know, home. And, uh, and so he told me, he told me, he's like, all right, Chad, he's like, look, we had a kind of a dirt backyard, a lot of weeds growing. He's like, I'll give you a dollar for every bucket of weeds that you pick today. And he gave me the buckets and said, there you go. The weeds were high. And and I'm like, all right, let's do this. So, so he left for school. I mean, I'm sorry, for work. And the first thing I did was I told my siblings, I said, hey, guys, let's go pick weeds. And for every bucket you fill up, I'll give you 50 cents. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I put them all to work. I did work as well. Got a bunch of buckets. My dad came home. He paid me a dollar for each one. And then I paid out the workers. And that was my first entrepreneurial mm-hmm. adventure. You like that idea of margin, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's margin great. Helps. That's great. Okay, so you've had three career paths, okay? Um, and you started your own business, uh, currently your real estate business. But looking back, if you were talking to yourself with the knowledge you have today, are there, are there some things you would do differently knowing what you know today? Sure. And I, I think that's kind of a common thing, right? With some experience comes lessons learned, right? We've all learned lessons along mm-hmm. the way. And, uh, and for me, I think two things, I wish I would have um, like got some mentorship earlier. I didn't get my first mentor till I was 45 years old. So that, that really could have helped. And then I wish, I wish I would have put some more time into networking and relationships uh, for me. And this was kind of partly because of my dad, like he was always a, a formal education guy. My grandpa was a doctor also, and um, formal education was always really big for him, right? And he pushed us that way. So 
So I, I focused on formal education, right? Ended up getting three master's degrees. And, but I, I wish I would have done more mentorship and more networking. I think that would have helped compress timeframes a little bit more. So I'm in I'm in the three different mastermind groups now, which is really helpful in, in the real estate space. And uh, and I, I pay a lot of money for these for these groups, for the mentors. But it's definitely a good investment in myself. And that's something I wish I would have done sooner. Great. You know, in the second half of the show, I want to dive back into that mastermind so, and, and, and dissect that a little bit further. But you've also done some things right. Okay, you're successful today. You're uh, running a nice uh, real estate company, $150 million portfolio. Uh, what are some things that were key decisions you made that you found that were a catalyst for your success? So I, I think the entrepreneurial spirit is is really helpful, right? And the idea that you just, you got to have grit. I mean, that's one of my company core values is grit. And, mm -hmm. and you, you get through it. With, with my engineering background it certainly helps uh with my problem solving and the way that i'm able to analyze different issues solve things uh really helps in growing a business it's not a requirement but for me that's my background and it really helps and and now i kind of see like all these different things i've done over the years kind of contribute to what i'm doing now and provide a really solid background in this i think it's part of the reason why csq has been been very successful in a short amount of time is just that that background right and I, I never really knew how it all come together and and I think most of us don't uh, but along the way if we're working hard and we're learning and, and trying to improve ourselves I think over time all that kind of background will help support you in whatever you do and so for me in real estate my, my background in construction background in engineering background in growing and scaling a business like all those things are really helpful in, in what I'm doing today. Yeah, perfect. Let's take a little commercial break. Talk about CSQ properties or anything else you would like to do about so our listeners get a chance to know who your customer is. Um, anything you want to know, have them know about your company and anything maybe you want to promote. So let's take a couple of minutes and uh, tell us about your company specifically. Sure. So so I'll start with myself because I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm passionate about entrepreneurs. I mentioned the, the EO uh, Entrepreneurs Organization earlier. I've been a, a member of that group for 10 years. I was, I was actually president of my chapter last year. So I'm very passionate about that group. And that's who I really am trying to help through real estate. And I wish I had gotten involved in real estate, even on the, on the passive income side earlier when I was running my business, because I could have created a, another second passive income stream that would have helped support me once I, I left the business. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs fall into a few different categories, right? They could be the type of entrepreneur that's just totally consumed by their business, especially when they first start out, they're totally consumed and they forget, literally they forget about themselves, right? They think mm -hmm. of the business first, they think of paying in their employees first, they pay themselves last and anything that they actually make, they put back into the business. And, and that's good for helping to, to grow a business and make sure it's successful. But I want to help remind entrepreneurs that, hey, don't forget about yourself. You know, invest in yourself a little bit. And I like to do that by investing in apartment buildings, which, which offers great risk-adjusted returns. It can create a passive income stream that can help during downturns of a business. Or let's say they close the business or sell the business or, or whatnot. It's nice to have something that's a, a diversified income stream. And, and you know this better than anybody in, in your line of work. So, so I wanna help, help provide that kind of education for entrepreneurs and, and just kind of open their eyes to something else besides, besides just their business. So I wrote a book called uh, Why Entrepreneurs Should Invest in Apartments. It's an ebook. You can download it from my website, csqproperties.com or find us on social media at csqproperties. And take a look. I mean, it's a pretty quick read, but it's it's very it, it lays it out well, and I think it's kind of eye opening for a, for a lot of entrepreneurs. So, are you looking for investors? Is that a, is that a I'd yes. say who your customer is? Yep. Yeah. So so primarily passive investors. Uh, they could be high W two income earners, but in general, people that have money, they they know they need to be investing in real estate uh, because it's it's a long term investment. And they want to create a passive income stream. And we, we 
typically will pay out distributions monthly, sometimes quarterly. And it's a passive income stream that is largely tax shielded from depreciation. And over time that, that grows and it could be a great part of somebody's uh, portfolio. Is there a minimum investor level income level you're looking for? Yeah, so generally it's either 75K or 100K, depending on the deal. Okay, okay, perfect. And are there, I don't, it's been years since I've been in that business. So are there certain parameters to, to, to invest in your company other than the, other than the uh, income level or the investment itself? Yeah, so, so generally speaking, depending on the deal, we're regulated by the SEC on, on our offerings, these private placement offerings. And so, sometimes you need to be an accredited investor or a sophisticated investor, depending on the type of investment. And there's different ways to, to get approved as uh, an accredited investor. Uh, but sometimes you just have to be a sophisticated investor, which means you have experience in investing. And um, that one's a much, much lower threshold. Uh, but you do have to have some experience, right? And, and you don't want to just, you know, all your put 100% of your savings into something like this. That's definitely not what real estate is for. Uh, but ha happy to talk to people through that um, if, if they'd like to learn more. Very good. Very good. Thanks, Chad, on that. Well, let's, uh, let's switch gears. So we're going to dive in a little bit of real estate, a uh, bit more in the context of, you know, we just came off of 2022 and you've been in business long enough to see that we all these headwinds that we're experiencing today usually come incrementally. Never do they ever come in one year. Okay. Uh, we are rolling into 2023, still have a hangover from 2022, especially things like interest rates that affect the real estate market. So I'm curious as an owner of a company, I want, I guess I'm going to divide this question up in two parts. One is the owner of a company. How did you navigate 2022? How are you planning on navigating 2023? Do you see opportunities to grow? Is this a time to retreat, uh, build your savings account, or just go out there and expand, diversify? How do you see that as a founder of a company, owner of a company to run the company? And then you mentioned a couple of things as an individual about mentors and things like that. What are you doing for you as an individual to take care of yourself, self-care, to make sure you're operating at your top peak performance as, a, as an owner of a company? Yeah, so great question. So um, it, I, I think a big part of it is being agile, flexible, and, and keeping your eye on the horizon, right? If you, if you talk to pilots, you know, they, they don't focus what's right in front of them. They focus on the horizon, and that's how they can kind of see the, see the balance, if you will, of the plane. And I think it's really important for entrepreneurs to do the same thing. So, you know, for me, uh, going through the the dot the dot com bust back in two thousand, right? I was I was a, a W two worker then, and uh, investing a lot in stocks and, and mutual funds, right? And um, and I learned back then the importance of diversification. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, being a younger guy in, in two thousand, a younger worker, and and realizing that I was a little too aggressive on my investments, and and I took a big hit. Fortunately, it wasn't all that I was doing. And, uh, and, and so I was able to weather that storm and that was all right. Uh, in 2008, when I was running a business and we, we ran into the great financial crisis, that had a, a, a big effect on our business and we had to pivot pretty quickly. We had to make adjustments. We had to make difficult decisions. And that is, is pretty important as a, as a company. What, what I found is inaction is is worse than the wrong action because even the wrong action you can learn pretty quick right and, and for me i already told you i'm an education guy but all entrepreneurs they need to learn pretty quick and it's very rare that someone will go from a to b or c or z on a straight line right it's just it's never that way but you take you take an action and then you adjust and so that that's why even even the wrong action i think can be better than inaction and a lot of companies have died on the vine because of inaction and not making decisions. And in, in 08, I learned, you know, real, real hand that you really have to, to be willing to, to make, some, make some decisions on limited information and then adjust, learn and adjust. And entrepreneurs are doing that every single day. So now fast forward to here we are, you know, filming this in 2023, you know, interest rates have, have skyrocketed. 
And as you alluded to, that's a huge issue for, for real estate because a lot of our real estate is debt financed. And if interest rates go up a lot, your debt gets really expensive and that can affect pricing. It affects your cash flow, and, and it's a major issue. So, so the way we're dealing that with that now, I, I'm, still, I'm still bullish on real estate, um, but you gotta be really careful in today's market on the debt side. And, and, and there's some ways to mitigate that risk. So as an engineer I'm, I'm, and an entrepreneur, I'm constantly evaluating risk and I'm trying to achieve the best, best risk adjusted returns I can achieve. So, so with that, you have to have a good understanding of the risk. It's never a hundred percent, but, but you have an idea of the risk and then you, you find out ways to mitigate that. So let me share an example with you on, on the debt side, because that's pretty big right now for real estate. So I'll give you an example of some deals I did. Uh, this was in uh, December last year. Um, so four months ago from when we're filming this. And so what we did was we got debt financing from a bank, but we did it at 50% LTV. So really low loan to value. And the bank likes that because they're in a senior position. And if they know that they're only giving you 50% of the loan, they feel better. They can give you a little bit more aggressive uh, lending terms because of that. The problem with that is on the investor side, if they have to put up half the equity, then their returns tend to be a, a, a bit lower because there's not as much leverage. So then the creative piece is bringing in seller financing for 25% of the deal, which would be in the second position to the senior debt or the bank debt. And, and then you only need to raise 25% for your investors or from your investors on the equity side. So they've got the leverage that, that makes it good for returns. Mm -hmm. your, your bank is happy with 50%. They give you more aggressive terms in, in terms of the loan. And then the seller is happy because they got the deal done. And, and you can actually get pretty aggressive seller financing terms mm -hmm. because you can tell the seller like, look, I'll give you the price you want but I'm missing this piece of the debt that I need and I need your help with it. And you give me this debt at, and what we did was 4%. You give us this debt at 4%, I'll give you the price you want. And, uh, and you put all those puzzle pieces together, which is essentially what a syndicator does. That's, that's, I'm a syndicator. Mm -hmm. So I bring all these different pieces of the puzzle together to get a deal done. And, uh, and everyone's happy. I mean, it, it was a win, win, win. The last thing I'll share uh, on the interest rates is you can also get interest rate caps. So again, by paying money, you can get an interest rate cap, which is saying, okay, for a period of time, my interest rate won't go above this. It's like a ceiling for the interest rates. And, uh, and it, right now, these interest rate caps are pretty expensive because there's a lot of exposure on the upside, but you know it's guaranteed, right? And so I'll just say, okay, if I can incorporate this price of an interest rate cap into my underwriting, I know I'm not going to go above that on my interest rate, on my interest debt, uh, interest payments. And that can give me some, some assurance to know that, hey, I can underwrite this deal. My debt payments are not going to go up this much. And if I can still cash flow and, and do well on the operation side, then again, you could have a really good deal on real estate in today's market. Yeah. And you leveled out, leveled out the investment, which is important to do. And especially in a in a variable market, hey, I remember back in the I'm an old guy, so back in the '80s, interest rates were like 19 percent, and we did a lot of real estate. We we bought that interest rate down. Sure. We thought it was good. We bought it down to 13, right? So we thought that was great, but uh, it was still better than 19. Um, so yeah, so creativity, I, I, it's definitely uh, definitely needed. And real estate is kind of an interesting play because it's it's not it's a it's a longer term play. So you got to have a strategic plan get you over x amount of years and, uh, i don't know what your average hold period is but let's say it's five years um you have to get to have forecast be able to forecast that market a little bit better so it sounds like you're very creative and engineering your engineering background allows you to be that analytical sounds like yep let's talk about yourself personally let's go back to you using mentors and uh, uh the entrepreneurs organization how is how does that help you uh, what else do you do to keep yourself focused and disciplined as a leader? Sure. So the mentorship is a big one. And, and like I said, um, you know, sometimes you can get mentorship for free. A lot of times you, you pay for it, but it's more than an investment for yourself. So I, I've done more on the, the, the paid side of mentoring and, and it's, it's been great, right? It's an investment in myself. 
The other thing I like to do, just as for me personally, is uh, is I like to work out. Like when I when I can work out, I'm a I'm a triathlete, and I like running and biking. When I can get out there and and just kind of clear my head, really really helps. I um I have five kids, so having five kids and running a business is 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 pretty taxing. So for me, that's my escape is getting out into the mountains. And uh, sometimes I, I play music, sometimes a podcast, but usually not just because that's just a time to relax. For me, it's mm-hmm. relaxing is when I work out and, and it's important to do that. So literally, like I have a, a goal tracker that I use for my business goals, my family goals and my personal goals. And literally, it's, it's one of the goals that's in there is, is to work out three times a week. And I need to schedule it in and like time block it so I can get it done. And, and for me, that helps uh, keep a clear head uh, despite a lot of issues going on and just juggling a lot of different things. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's, have, let's talk about mentors just real quickly. You know, what do you use a mentor for? Is there something specific or is it just to bounce business ideas off of? Or how do you, how do you utilize a, a mentor more specifically? Yeah, so so for me, I've done it uh, in real estate. Like I said, I I, I haven't done. I just started using mentors more recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably three years ago, I I you know had my first mentor. It was actually through EO actually, and then and then I've since hired mentors and mastermind groups, uh, but but real estate focused. So for me, that's really what, like where I'm putting a lot of energy into is growing and scaling this business. And I feel like that's where I need a lot of help right now. And so hiring people that have done it before it has been really helpful. And, and it's just a way to kind of see a little bit with a little bit more clarity, the road ahead of you, right? Like you're going down the road and you're going to hit some potholes, but with the mentor, you're able to see farther ahead of you on that road. And in fact, depending on where you want to get to, they might have suggestions like, hey, instead of taking that road, why don't you take this path? And here's why. So I can avoid more potholes. I can wind up traveling faster down the road, making decisions quicker. And it just helps accelerate or compress that time frame for me getting from, from A to B with some help from someone who, who's done it before. Yeah. And I think that's the first a key to a good leader to accept accept help and to say you know there's somebody who's got who's done it who's who's uh, paved the way for me i don't have to create the wheel i just be able to just listen to their wisdom as you're doing for our guests today so uh as our guest today for our listeners i should say uh i want to say thank you for taking the time today on your busy schedule five kids running a business and there's a lot of things going on um but thanks for sharing your wisdom with our listeners uh for doing that if they want to get to learn more about what you do or get a chance to talk to you about real estate or whatever, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Sure. I think uh, through any social medias is just at CSQ properties. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel where I put a lot of educational videos out. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, or the, the website csqproperties.com. And that's also where you could uh, download that ebook that we were talking about earlier on why entrepreneurs should invest in apartments. Uh, I just got to ask you, I've been real estate, so many opportunities in areas, Two, uh, 30 seconds, why apartments? So apartments are, are, are great. They're in terms of like, again, risk adjusted returns. If you look back in 2008, when we at the, the height of that crisis, we had a 4% foreclosure rate on homes. Apartment buildings were only 0.4%. So very, very small number. And there's a variety of reasons why it was as low as it was. I won't go into that right now, but suffice it to say, it's a, it's a very stable asset. And, uh, and we have a housing shortage here in the, in the United States. In particular, people can't afford houses right now because the interest rates and there's a lot of renters and we're becoming a renters nation. That's also in the ebook. So all those reasons are why I think apartments are a solid investment. Yeah, and I've always liked the fact that uh, your income can be adjusted on an annual basis. <laughs> yes, that's you, helpful. You can adapt to the market as it comes and goes. So, all right, thanks again, Chad. I put the I will put all this information and in notes in the podcast. This podcast will be broadcasted on all podcast platforms in the next two to three weeks, and you can also find us on our YouTube channel if you want to watch the video version of this. Chad, thanks again for uh, being on the show, and I hope you have a great day. Sounds good. Thanks, Rich. You bet. 
Rich LeBrun here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag Get It Done Entrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, rlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.